Hi, my name is Christina Roberts, and today I'd like to talk to you about Delta Airlines and about the challenges and obstacles that Delta Airlines has had to face before reaching a turnaround strategy which has led Delta Airlines to where they are today. I will be discussing the following. For the introduction, the history of Delta Airlines and how they became part of the airline industry, the overarching challenges Delta Airlines has had to face to get to where they are today, the perceived obstacles Delta Airlines has had to overcome along the way, some small steps, small win opportunities, the turnaround strategy that Delta Airlines developed to get back on their feet, and key leadership principles that would have helped Delta Airlines improve their turnaround strategy. Delta Airlines began in 1924 when Colette Everman Woolman and an associate started an agricultural airplane crop dusting company to get rid of bull weevils and insects. Huff to Land Dusters, the first of its kind, had a dusting speed of 80 to 85 miles per hour with an advantage of low speed flying, heavy payload capacity, and low maintenance costs. The company evolved from an agricultural crop dusting service in 1928 and became Delta Air Service. In 1929, the company then began receiving contracts for airmail delivery, which then transitioned to passenger transportation to Dallas, Jacksonville, and Mississippi. After many more years of success from becoming incorporated and awarded airmail contracts to contracts that devoted time to the troops under the War Department contract, to merging with Chicago and Southern Airlines in 1953, then merging again with Delaware Airlines in 1967, Delta Airlines has continued to grow at an exponential rate. This rate continued until 1992 when Delta Airlines had a financing, financing problem with Pan Am that resulted in a net loss of $506 million for fiscal year 1991. This is when Delta Airlines knew they had to make a change. Delta Airlines was forced to make some unwanted changes to get back on track financially. Delta Airlines reduced workforces by 5% froze wages and cut salaries, as well as reduced transatlantic fares by 45% in 1992 and launched new routes from Los Angeles to Hong Kong. This resulted in a shift focus to overseas routes paid dividends when the company posted a profit of $60 million in the first quarter of 1993, compared to the $125 million reported the previous year. After the September 11 attacks in 2001, Delta Airlines began to see a decline as many of the U.S. airlines in the industry went bankrupt. Delta was the one of the few major carriers that managed to survive the airline's industry decline. The overarching challenge began when Delta Airlines announced near the end of 2004 that it would embark on a major reconstructing program. This reconstructing program aimed to restore the airline to profitability by the end of 2006 and would involve making significant changes in airline operations and major cost-cutting initiatives. This began with the Delta Airlines laying off 7,000 workers over an 18-month period, slashing 90% of flights into, into and from Dallas, and making deep cuts to wages of the workers who remained. In August 2004, Delta's CEO, Gerald Grinstein, announced a comprehensive reconstructing plan, the Delta Solution, which aimed to put Delta back on the growth plan. This plan would transform product, fleet, network, and cost structures into the airline that would be designed to carve out new and previously uncharted network in airline territory. During the reconstructing, Delta Airlines perceived some obstacles that would prevent the Delta solution from being a success. In September 2004, the analysis projected that Delta would enter bankruptcy before the company would be able to recover from the reconstructing. Another obstacle Delta perceived was that if the pilot's union refused to accept wages cut by the end of September 2004, the company would need to file for bankruptcy. The airline said in its second quarter report to the Securities and Exchange Commission, if we cannot make substantial progress in the near term toward achieving a competitive cost structure that will permit us to access the capital markets on accessible terms, 
acceptable terms, we will need to seek to re restructure our costs under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, paying a premium for air quality air service became obsolete, which is just one of the changes happening in the airline industry that Delta, Delta found difficult to adapt to. Losing over $5.6 million billion between 2001 and mid-2004 and rapidly burning through the $700 million of its unrestricted cash reserves, which was possibly due to the rise of contributions to pension funds as a result of many of Delta's pilots opting to for early retirement. Other obstacles included the Air Airline Pilots Association. When Delta negotiated to get the union to accept pay cuts, ultimately helping the airline balance its precarious cash position. After emerging from bankruptcy on April 30th, 2007, Delta Airlines had a new logo and paint scheme and was now an independent carrier. Delta then merged with Northwest Airlines, becoming the world's largest airline and raising the company's value from $10 billion to $17.7 billion. The merger was a win-win for both companies, allowing the combined carrier to gain large economies of scale and scope, increasing their operating efficiency and improved supply chain management. Delta has managed to make significant strides to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions and have succeeded in lowering its annual absolute greenhouse gas emissions by 7.6 billion metric tons since 2005, serving 160 million customers each year, 80,000 employees worldwide, and operating and, and maintaining a fleet of more than 700 aircraft. Delta participates in the industry's leading transatlantic joint venture with Air France KLM as a founding member of the Sky Team Global Alliance. Some obstacles in the way of making progress past the challenge were the September 11 tax resulting in decline in the airline industry, attempting to obtain pay cuts of $1 billion from uni unionized pilots and facing filing bankrupt, fuel costs expected to rise by $680 million, cash reserves quickly declining due to pension payments and increased operational expenses, $20 billion in debt with $1.2 billion due to be repaid by early 2005, analysis downgraded Delta's credit rating at frequent intervals making it expensive to borrow funds to meet financial obligations, unpredicted industry, airline industry changing which was difficult to adapt to. Here are steps to take to avoid difficulties and complete the strategy successfully. Adapting the McKinsey 7S framework can help to avoid difficulties and complete the strategy successfully. This organizational tool developed by Robert H. Waterman and Tom Peters can help Delta to successfully implement its strategy for change. The seven S's can be divided into tangible S's, hard, and intangible, soft, and aligning each of these categories can ensure a smooth implementation of the McKinsey 7S framework. For strategy, what, it, what needs to be implemented, structures, structure the chain of command, system, the tools used to perform tasks and complete processes, skills, what employees can do, styles, how the leaders lead, staff, the employees, and shared values, the core values expressed through the corporation or the corporate culture. A leader is someone that exhibits certain traits that set them apart from others. To be strong, effective, and a successful leader, there are key principles and effective leadership that drive collaboration and success. Anyone can take charge, but it takes the right tools and skills to be an effective leader. The following principles are key to becoming a great leader. Openness, which is communicating with an objective and gaining understanding by keeping an open mind when communicating to see things from others', others point of view will make it easier to explain your expectations if you speak from their mindset. Lead by example. Exemplify the qualities that are expected of the team and staff. Personalization. 
get to know the team on a personal level and check up on them from time to time will create relationships. The team will be more willing to get behind the vision. Prioritize. Prioritizing communications by keeping emails short and concise and not waste the team's time. Ultimately, communicating exactly what is expected clear so that no time is wasted. Avoiding monologue. By communicating with the team and not telling not to them will help them gain understanding and insight into the inner workings of the team. Clarity. Clear and simple communication to reduce productivity loss. Trust. If the team doesn't respect the leader, then they won't listen. Critique. Give praise when it is deserved and constructive criticism when needed. Communicating how a team member can improve shows that potential can be seen in them. Listen. Effective listening helps to build relationships, solve problems, ensure understanding, and improve accuracy. Inspire. The fuel that keeps everyone working hard toward the ultimate goal is inspiration. Rally the team around the ultimate goal and help them to embrace the vision. In summary, I discussed the introduction, which was the history of Delta Airlines and how they became a part of the airline industry, the overarching challenges Delta Airlines has had to face to get to where they are today, the perceived obstacles Delta Airlines had to overcome along the way, some small steps, small win opportunities, the turnaround strategy that Delta Airlines developed to get back on their feet, and key leadership principles that would have helped Delta Airlines implement their new turnaround strategy. For more information, please check out the following sites. Thanks for watching and have a great day.